first NGO is Swadha Foundation, whose mission is to transform the lives of underprivileged children and youth by providing them access to education and lifting them out of the cycle of poverty. In most cases, the beneficiary will be the first to be educated in their family. By the way, did you know that Albert Einstein was the first educated member of his family? For the first pitch of the evening, to share Swadha's fantastic journey with us, let's welcome Rajesh Mandyam. Hi everybody, I am Rajesh Mandyam, the founder trustee of Swada Foundation. Think of yourself for the next four or five minutes as a rural boy or girl, a 10th topper from a poor rural family. Think what happens if your father, who is the sole wage earner, actually meets with a life crippling accident. Think what happens if your family cannot afford an evening meal, so you have to get to work to get that. Think what happens if your parents come and tell you and your siblings that only one of them gets the chance to buy books to study. Think that because you are a girl, you are told by your father to discontinue studies, whereas your brother gets more chances. This is the problem that plagues youngsters in rural India today. What do they choose? Now, it's a stark situation in India. Most of rural India does not go on to study up to graduation. Very few people get a chance to get trained and enter into the formal sector. Now, this problem plagues 33 crore people in this country, youngsters, and this is 28% of the world's population sitting here in India. Now, this problem dawned on me in 2010 when I was living in Stockholm and I received an email from my colleague asking for some money to educate a rural youngster. I was so moved by the problem that I spoke to my parents about it in the next Skype call. They gave me a big surprise. They told me to take all their life savings and start with Sada Foundation. We started Sada with one beneficiary, that is Naveen. He is now well settled in life and he is our donor. Now we have a simple 3E approach, which is to educate, enhance and employ our beneficiaries. We educate them from the 11th standard till the end of graduation or a professional degree. We enhance them with over 2000 hours of help spread across five or six years. This includes job readiness training, mental wellness training, summer internships, English education, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and access to digital tools. We finally employ them in a white collar job with lot of focused skilling. Now we have been doing this for 12 years. We have made sure that our beneficiary students who get employed increase their family annual family income by between 5x to 15x times. We support girls, they, come, they make around 60%. Now, most of our beneficiaries are first generation graduates. We support students from over 150 villages. Finally, we have the backing of 100 plus selfless Indian mentors, both living here and abroad, who give these students their knowledge and wisdom. Now, we want to scale this model. We want to make this to 1,000 students. We want to make our students digitally literate. We want to employ key staff. We want to actually open new learning centers, and finally create more curriculum that can get them jobs. If you have noticed, ours is a skill deep model. We are different from others. We are not superficial. We need five or six years for results to be born. Now, we also make sure that education and skilling actually delivers results. We make a lot of success stories. Think of it as positive viruses these days. Now, we increase the chances of employment. Finally, 
whatever we do it's an open source model free for the world to reuse and readapt with us you will have a model which has got a generational impact you will be investing in rural youngsters for their endurance and grit lastly you will have a lot of new beginnings like jyoti who is a first nurse from jakepalli village like kadar basha who has now become an award winning draftsman like nagalakshmi sitting in a village she is an android developer earning 6 lakh rupees anjali who can buy practical books is an ibmer now renuka prasad earns 15 times more income than his mother in his first salary now with just 3 lakh rupees for a student you will help us in creating thousand such beginnings by 2024 thank you to all of you and a big thanks to all our mentors and svp thank you so much rajesh what your parents did by giving over this earnings was so inspiring the next presenting ngo is called the stone soup trust its mission is to be the champion of gabriel effect and change in a positive way how the community has perceptions about menstruation they wish to do so by having a world without sanitary waste to begin with they wish to make every district sanitary waste free by creating employment for women to share their story let's welcome padma subramanian Padma I am the head of Stone Soup Trust previously I was working for Tata Trust I was working in Yading Yadgir in the menstrual hygiene management program the government there was distributing free disposable sanitary pads for school girls to manage their period all the girls were very happy receiving it but they just had one question how do you dispose of a disposable sanitary pad now there is no good answer to this you cannot dump them in the landfill the plastics in them will take around 800 to 1000 years to disintegrate you cannot flush them they are going to block your drains you cannot burn them or micro incinerate them they are going to release dioxins and other carcinogens there is no way you can dispose of a disposable sanitary pad from the face of the earth this is just not a problem of yadgir there are 335 million menstruating women in india and about 90% of the urban women and 60% of rural women use disposable pads which means india is creating 12 billion sanitary pads every year and now if you are going to discard them the way we are discarding it today you are not going to have a mount everest tomorrow you are going to have a pad everest then why is the government continuing to distribute free disposable pads or subsidizing them period poverty is a reality all they want to provide is a cash free solution for women to manage their periods stone soup trust we work towards eradicating period poverty we are just we just don't do uh, uh, provide cash free solution we are a cash free trash free and a rash free solution it's all about gifting sustainable menstruation a menstrual cup is the most sustainable way for you to manage your period it lasts for 10 years it saves around 1800 disposable pads from going to the landfill and during your menstru menstrual uh, lifetime a woman just uses four cups because of the stigma around uh, insertion we recommend reusable cloth pads for school children it lasts for about 4 to 5 years keeps away 500 disposable pads from going to the landfill and in a menstrual lifetime a woman would just be using 35 reusable cloth pad now let's compare this with the disposable pads it lasts for just 4 to 6 hours it is lying all around us and in a menstrual lifetime a woman would be using more than 6000 pads Let me share with you some inspiring stories. Kusuma Reddy is a Asha worker. She gives door-to-door -door care for sick people and pregnant women. She found it very difficult to manage her periods, especially when she is putting long hours in the field. Prolonged use of disposable sanitary pads caused a lot of rashes and discomfort for her that she stopped working on her menstruation days. Today she is a very happy user of stone soup menstrual cup. She manages her period very comfortably for 8 hours. 
she has started working even on her menstruation days tone soup trust has already donated 3000 plus menstrual cups for covid warriors like kusuma reddy and women in communities navya and divya shri are school children they were recipients of the government free disposable pads scheme they found it extremely difficult to dispose of their pads not only in the school but also at home where the waste pickup was very irregular today they are very happy users of stone soup reusable cloth pads they are very happy that they are not contributing to the garbage minus stone soup has already donated 5000 plus reusable cloth pads to school girls like divya and navya shri now we don't get these pads stitched out of any big factories we have set up green dot centers these are livelihood centers where we train women to stitch cloth pads spread awareness on sustainable menstruation and sell cloth pads and menstrual cups so that these are available made available for women locally neelavati is one such an entrepreneur she is a paralympian and she heads one of the units that stitches stone soup cloth pads she employs only physically challenged people in her unit we want to empower more women like neelavati to not only stitch cloth pads but also sell cloth pads and menstrual cups locally stone soup press has already set up eight such green dot centers through all these initiatives we have saved 8 million disposable pads from going to the landfill and we have created livelihood for 100 plus women next year we want to target 80000 women gifting them cash free trash free rash free periods which means in about 10 years we will be keeping away 90 million disposable pads from going to the landfill and towards this our ask is 4 crores we want to set up 10 green dot centers which will create livelihood for three more than 300 women who will be continuing to save many more disposable pads from going to the landfills and towards this our ask is 70 lakhs i am very happy to introduce you to our stone soup family and we urge you to join hands with us in our journey of period love bleed green thank you very much for the opportunity thanks padma <clears throat> love the way you spoke about the pad mountain the period poverty green dot and the cash free trash free and rash free life that you want to give to the woman we would now love you to take a listen to the work that sampark is doing in gender equality and social inclusion their mission is to help vulnerable people especially women to improve their lives through educational interventions primarily aimed at increasing the women's income earning abilities to share about sampark's wonderful work let me welcome kripa shriram Good evening everyone. I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking your time to join us in this event today. And I represent Sampark. I am privileged to share with you, but I'm not a proud Bangalorean to say no city for migrant women and children. To tell you as to why I say this, let me introduce you to Asha. Born in a village in Raichur, studied till 8 got married by 18 she moved to the city with her husband looking for a job she wanted to earn an income to support her family and repay their debts back in the village asha is unskilled so she joins the construction site as a helper and earned about 250 to 300, 300 rupees every day life goes on she becomes pregnant but still continues to work till about 7th and 8th month after which she stays at home and delivers the child She watches the medical expenses piling up the family is not able to manage their expenses and she is not able to support her uh, family in the village so she is forced by the circumstances to go back to the same job at the construction site but 
with her child. She ignores her health and her child's health to put food back on all their plates. We've all met this Asha in our lives. They live near our houses, in labor colonies, in these blue tents. And in Bangalore alone, there are about 15 lakh migrants and that's twice the population of a city like Udaipur, of which 50% of them are women. It's very sad that only 18% of them get any kind of prenatal care while they are in the city. And their children are no better. 60% uh, of migrant children totally miss their immunization while they are in the city. Now, these vulnerable people are just one step away from starvation. And we all saw this harsh reality during the recent pandemic, right? I mean, the lack of information about the state support, the uh, fear of the unknown, the inability to manage their expenses, just push them to take the roads back to their homes. So let us not make them walk back again. And at Sampar, we very strongly believe this and we are her friend, philosopher and guide. How we empower Asha is we provide them with childcare facilities. We provide information and awareness about her rights and we connect her to the existing social protection schemes of the state and we link her to the medical facilities in the city and we also provide skills training when needed. And what we do for Asha's children is we run creches where we provide a safe and fun space for them to learn and serve them three meals, nutritious meals a day and monitor their growth uh, monthly and uh, so that we catch their malnourishment early and put them on special diet. We get them school ready and admit them to the government schools in the cities. And uh, what we do for Asha herself is we conduct awareness session in the labor colonies about the social protection schemes which she is eligible for and we uh, register them with the construction workers welfare board so that they can take advantage of the schemes uh, of the 8,000 crores sitting with the welfare board, workers welfare board to be spent only on the benefit of these migrant workers. Uh, we conduct health camps for them and link them to the pre and postnatal care with the public health centers, Anganwadis and the government hospitals in the city. To tell you about uh, Sampark's 30 years of work, Sampark was founded in 1991 by Dr. Smitha Premchandar and our initial journey started with rural women. And the pressing needs of migrant women made us start a first crash in 2007 in Bangalore, through which we've reached about 15,000 children and 10,000 women till now. As of now, we run 18 crashes in Bangalore and we aim to run 75 crashes by 2025 and to support 30,000 children and 20,000 women through that. Uh, the everyday routine of Asha, um, 32,000 kgs of cement passes through her hands. She carries about eight liters of water weighing eight kgs about 15 times in an hour. Her every day is physically exhausting and tiring. So all I request is to support Asha in her struggle to break this intergenerational poverty so that her child doesn't end up like her. And in doing this, Sampark aims to raise six crores to run 75 crashes. Uh, it takes nine lakhs to support a crash for a year. And all it takes is just 2,500 rupees. That's one restaurant meal for us to support a child for a month. So I thank you for the opportunity to present Asha's story in this platform. Thanks for the wonderful support of Passage and SVP. Thank you all. Kripa, that lady's name was Asha, but looks like you and the work of Sampark is bringing Asha in her life. Love that statement, let us not make them walk back again. Wish you all the best in the work that you do. The worst feeling a human being can go through is to feel helpless. Poverty often makes a person feel very helpless. Here is an NGO called Prerna where they believe that education and income generation through education is the most powerful means of fighting poverty. Prerna's vision is to give every deserving student access to skill development, employment and education. To share Prerna's mission with us this evening, let's welcome their CEO Ram Shastri.
Thank you, Naren. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ram Shastri, CEO of Prerana, where we all believe that every deserving student shall have access to education, skill development, and employment. I would like to introduce Maheshwari to you. She studied her BCom in a government college in Puderu, a small village in the most backward district, Chamrajnagar in Karnataka. When we first met her, before we started our skill development training, this is what Maheshwari had to say. I would like you to listen in. My name is Maheshwari. I was born in Ildekonde, English language, and then other language also. And uh, job uh, qualities, uh, some other qualities, uh, I will develop it. Uh, so, total overall is the content. And the Tumba expectation is A first generation person to go to college, a very studious Maheshwari, we thought something was missing. After about a year, when Professor Radhika Jaydev from Singapore wanted to know more about Prerana, we thought it was best for Maheshwari to introduce herself and Prerana to Professor Radhika. Here is what Maheshwari talking to Professor Radhika for almost an hour from her hostel. Rural Canada students, rural Canada students, very needs in Prerana training, ma'am. This is my humble request, you ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I think they are doing a very good job, excellent job. Yeah, I can see that in you. <laughs> yeah. Here is Maheshwari, a transformed Maheshwari, more confident of speaking to a professor from an international university so confidently using the technology and digitally uh, aware, literate and tech savvy Maheshwari. There are a lot of opportunities for Maheshwari now. She can get into a voice BPO. She can become an entrepreneur. She can go into retail business or she can get into banking sector. Welcome to Prerana where Educate and empower India is our motto. How do we do this? We do this through scholarships to keep these students in the college. And most importantly, skill development, which consists of foundation skills, professional skills, and interview preparation. And finally, we connect them with the career so that they can realize their dream and put their potential to full utilization. We have created about 2,500 plus Maheshwaris in the last five years and nurtured them and majority of them are from rural India. This is the college where Maheshwari studied in Kuderu and our dream is to help create 5,000 such Maheshwaris in the next five years. We have put ourselves on a great growth plan. In the next two years we want to cover two districts of Karnataka and impact at least 5,000 beneficiaries. And next, go on to 10 districts and 20 districts. And by 2030, we want to cover all 31 districts of Karnataka and make sure that 2 lakh plus students are benefited from our programs. And at least 10,000 people are put into a fantastic career path. And the support we need from you is funding and mentoring. And in the next one year, we have a project to train 1,000 such Maheshwaris at a cost of about 3,000 rupees per student and put them on a, a good job so that a total economic value generated for the society will be at least about 5 crore every year. All it takes is one cost of a dinner outing for us to create one Maheshwari. The result is phenomenal. We have a PhD and postdoctoral research students. We have data analysts. We have a lot of these alumni working in multinational companies. And every February, they come together to raise funds to in turn create many more alumni like them. I am supported by a fantastic board full of educationalists, technologists, and more importantly, very passionate people in empowering rural India. After spending about 20 plus years in corporate life, I have dedicated my life 
to the cause of prerna and i wholeheartedly invite you to come be part of this wonderful journey to create many 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 maheshwaris and empower rural india thank you for your time thanks to svp for this opportunity have a wonderful evening jai hind ram you are doing fantastic work through prerna Rabindranath Tagore had the dream of India being a country where knowledge is free which he wrote about in his poetry where the mind is held without fear wish you all the best for your work Munshi Premchand in his story Budi Kaki says budhapa bachpan ka punar agman hota hai and it is said that the culture of a country is revealed by the way we treat our elderly people here is an ngo called maya care that assists senior citizens in activities that offers them convenience independence and happiness while continuing to live in their own homes it is a movement propelled by a growing network of volunteers and support staff composed of persons with disabilities to share his personal and maya cares growth journey let's welcome a key member of the maya care team nilesh borde Hello and namaste. I am Nilesh, and I represent Maya Care. I'm a person who has never been able to walk due to cerebral palsy, and one of my hand is also not operational. Because of my condition, employment has always been a challenge for me. One of the most painful aspect of being disabled is that I have to seek help from my mother, my brother's family, and others for my basic needs. Due to this. I used to find it difficult to lead a life of independence and self-respect. Like me, there are 26 million people with disability in India, almost two percent of the population. Now meet Mr. M. K. Parthi, a 101-year-old living in Pune. In his young days, he used to be a noted theatre critic and a journalist. Now, however, he does not have support to pursue these activities due to age and failing eyesight. There are millions of people like Mr. Pardi who need help in their daily activities and missing out on a life of independence and dignity. My care aims to help these both, the elderly and the person with disability, through this unique model. Let's have a quick look on how my care works. Somewhere conceived of an impossible dream, a dream in which those who thrived on intellectual stimulation, like Mr. Pardi, would continue to live active. happy and independent lives served by those who would be the next best thing to family a dream in which the administrative backbone of this service would be persons who overcome their disabilities learning growing into independent professionals to lead by a care a dream in which the elderly can dream on lead the active lives they deserve to a dream in which persons with disability achieve their own dreams a sense of purpose and financial independence So this is how my care works. Persons with disability are assigned work that leverages our strength. Those of us who cannot see are the voice team handling calls. Those of us who cannot speak or hear are the data team handling emails and data. And the rest of us with cerebral palsy, polio and so on are the power team entrusted with the responsibility of leading my care towards this goal. we maintain the list of volunteers who want to serve the elderly 
the volunteers reach us through our website and respond to our request on social media. We assign the volunteers to the elderly who need our help. The volunteers provide convenience, independence, and happiness to the elderly by doing their banking work, helping them to the gadgets, accompanying them to the hospital, picking up medical reports, reading or writing to them, and many more. There are 400 people like me at Maya Care. Few of them, like Jyoti, Archana, Prerna, Abhijit, Ronak, who after gaining the intense training of 5,300 hours, are learning to perform different roles like HR, recruitment, city coordination, accounting, uh, uh, fundraising, and all that is needed to run an organization. Maya Care has not just given us a chance to earn the livelihood, but learn to be leaders. Our work touches the elderly in various shapes and forms across 30 Indian cities. We have grown the number of best beneficiaries seven times in these three years. We have increased the participation of persons with disability 100 times in these three years. And now we have 20 times the number of volunteers with us. In the coming year, we are planning to reach more cities of India. And for, day, for this, we need your support. We have a budget of 1.5 crore for the next financial year. Your contribution can make a big difference to us to meaningfully impact the elderly and the person with disability. I know you all know Anilesh Borde and Mr. Padi in your lives. I request you to step in and make a difference. We look forward to your support. Bula ke apne gamo ko hum china sikhate hai sabko. Wo kehte hai kar nahi paoge. Hum karke dikhate hai sabko. Thank you. Thank you so much SVP for this lovely opportunity. Nilesh, you and your story has been so inspiring. There must be many Nilesh and many Pardi over there. Hundreds of PWDs are working, training of 5,300 plus hours and creating leaders. Hats off to you. Here is a very unique NGO, Manzil Mystics, whose vision is to transform the youth lives in low-income communities and schools by enabling access and use of music to trigger creativity, learning and social change. Their aim is to enable each child to realize their fullest potential and to give voices to their dreams. To present a tale of passion and creativity, let's listen to their co-founder, Anurag Hoon. Hi everyone, my name is Anurag from a Delhi-based band and non-profit, Mantil Mystics. Let me just take you to the journey of my musical journey and people I work with. His name is Ayush, student of our vocal and drum class. Her name is Radhika, student of an MCD school in Delhi. And he's Raj, student come from neighborhood. When I asked them if you school to go to all of them said no. But when I asked them if you want music, all of them said yes, obviously. But when he asked them, कि क्या तुम मैथ्स गिटार पे सीखना चाहोगे एंड दे ऑल गॉट शॉक्ड एंड आस्क्ड हर इज इट पॉसिबल सो वी वर्क्ड ऑन इट टू मेक इट पॉसिबल एंड टुगेदर वी आर मंजिल मिस्टेक्स मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट दैट वी मीट इन आवर जर्नी आर शाइ बट आई बिलीव दैट म्यूजिक क्रिएट्स एन इनटेंजिबल इंपैक्ट ऑन आवर लाइफ दैट कैन बी फेल्ट इन दिस स्मॉल वीडियो लेट्स वॉच इट टुगेदर
Shaheed Hai is not just a song, but a whole project itself. The primary school choir, the same children that you saw in the video, actually wrote the song. I know you could feel the intangible impact I was talking about. But what makes me sad is three out of four of 4.2 million children only in Delhi do not get uh, what primary school children got. But where we know that music not only aid in our academic and personal excellence, but also can become a career option for thousands of musicians. Thousands of musicians just like us. All of us come from the same community. Three out of six of us, including myself, have experienced that intangible impact through music. As we got 100% scholarship to study in, in the USA uh, and learn uh, things but, uh, through but beyond music. In Manzil Mystics, we teach how to sing, write, and compose a song. But we design our activities in a way that we cover education skills and policies all through music. And since 100% of these schools do not have any infrastructure in place, we built India's first mobile music classroom and recording studio. So one bus can educate 8,000 children in 20 schools. We do it through a two year long fellowship in which we find talented and most prom promising musicians from neighborhood just like us. Let me just share a story of Suraj. Just, just like Ayush in the first slide, Suraj wanted to learn music but he had to leave his education in very early stage. He gave his love for music, becoming a musician a try by joining Mantel Mystics. After two years of dedication and being a curious learner, he got eligible to become a fellow with us. He spent 20 hours learning music and skills beyond music. In return, he got 15 to 25,000 a month. He used this opportunity to become a passionate musician leader in education development and music sector by educating 400 plus children in five schools and work on various music-based projects. Suraj is not the only one. We have 54 stories like Suraj. Stories of 54 musicians come from neighborhood trying to set their career in three different sectors. And that's what we will be doing in the fellowship. The effort of passionate musicians like Suraj and curious students like Ayush helped us become one of the most impactful and scalable innovation in education in the world. And not only this, we have got recognized by eight national and five international incubation and fellowship program and has been, uh, uh, has partnered with organize, organizations like SBA Card, Pratham, Delhi government and all. Umid hai, I've been able to share how music can create happiness and hope in the world. Please help us give it by giving 1.3 CR for launching the fellowship this year. 70 lakh to build another bus music studio. 30 lakh to support salaries of musicians like Suraj or gift us a music performance. Thank you so much. Anurag, your name has Rag. So you are the perfect person for this work. And love the idea of the choir with the songs called Ummeed Hai. Brilliant and all the best. Next NGO is Shamta. Their vision is to mitigate vulnerability of human exploitation survivors through vocational training, enhancing employability and financial self-sufficiency. To share their story, we have a veteran of the organization, Jairaj D'Souza. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jairaj D'Souza from Shamta. Uh, I want to tell you the story of Bulbul. Bulbul, yes. I met her in 2019 when I was in Shamta as a volunteer. Bulbul was often at a very young age and she was sent to work as a domestic help by one of her aunts who adopted her. Barely in her teens, Bulbul was traded off several times to multiple locations. Bulbul for two years was trapped. She was beyond hope. The surprising thing about Bulbul was that during this time, she was rescued and sent for rehabilitation at least 
thrice the authorities in the shelter homes they they were just uh, kept saying that bulbul is beyond hope and the reason was because bulbul kept going back to the same trade but nobody asked the question why why did bulbul go back to the same trade in india 16 million women face gender based violence in a year the number of young girls uh, being trafficked has increased 14 times just in the last decade and the reason for this is extreme poverty and illiteracy the reason for this is re this revictimization is a major gap in the government's rehabilitation process which fails to equip survivors with necessary life skills and vocational skills in 2011 shamta was born to break this vision to break to break the cycle of revictimization and uh in, in and 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 we do this by in uh, by interventions by intervention of life skills counseling vocational skills job readiness and hand holding shamta's nine dimensional model of reintegration has been developed in the last 10 years to successfully break revictimization in this model of revictimization there are several interventions where women are uh, taken through a uh, 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 process of counseling where they given life skills training academic education if necessary where the women are given mentoring they are given job readiness training they are even placed in jobs and after being placed in jobs they have hand holding is done with them and this takes a minimum of 2 years and it can go even beyond 5 years because this is a very intensive process shamta's uh, model of reintegration today has helped bulbul would you like to know what has happened to bulbul bulbul today is not only recovering and and doing well but she is being trained to be a lab technician bulbul story is a testament of shamta's model of engage equip and empower when it comes to generating livelihoods and shamta aims to sustain itself by uh, uh, this shamta model of shamta unlimited enterprise where women survivors are given a very sheltered environment and an earn and learn method is provided to them this helps the women to generate livelihoods and it also incentivizes them and this gives us opportunities to provide training to other women as well we are on a mission we want to scale up shamta beyond thane mumbai and navi mumbai we today want your help we want to train and make 1500 such bulbuls employable and we want them to get livelihoods and live a decent life for this we need your help and support we need 60000 rupees per woman per month that is just rupees 160 to 6 rupees just a cup of coffee or a snack that you sacrifice or if you are on a diet please save that money aside to transform the life of many such bulbuls we need a 5000 square feet facility where we can train and produce bags and fashion jewelry by these survivors which are sold in the market we need your help for bulk orders we need your help to place our women in jobs and to help them to get a decent living come join with us to break the cycle of revictimization thank you each one of you and thank you svp for this opportunity thanks jairaj for the wonderful work that you are doing a bulbul whose voice would have never been heard has been heard thanks to your efforts listening to her story sent a chill down my spine and i wish and pray you get all the support from everybody in the society our next ngo is kadam whose mission is to develop self sustained rural business enterprises they do this by creating income generating opportunities by the use of locally available natural raw materials the traditional community knowledge of handicrafts 
एंड दे डेवलप इन्वायरमेंट फ्रेंडली एथिकली मेड प्रोडक्ट्स कीपिंग द करेंट ट्रेंड्स इन माइंड टू शेयर हर जर्नी लेट्स लिसन टू कदम्स फाउंडर पायल नाथ A very good evening, uh, respected panelists and the audience. Welcome to Craft Tech emerging from bottom of the pyramid. Handicrafts and um, handlooms was declared as a sunset industry, but it employs more than nine million people in India. It also fulfills up to twelve of the seventeen sustainable development goals. while we led the world lead the world in exports of raw materials like cotton yarn our global share of the finished goods is just 10.6% vietnam has 21% of the global share bangladesh and china buy this raw material from us and are able to export finished products at cheaper rates than us the reason seem hidden in low technology induction non efficient market linkages the way we work in decentralized manner in the villages and working in silos the sector hasn't created work for such large numbers enough for livelihood uh, so thus they look to migrate to cities to work craft sector needs revival and economic viability for these bottom of the pyramid culture bearers of our country with this belief kadam was born in 2006 um nirupama is a post graduate from a village in orissa she's an artisan's daughter also and knows basketry in spite of that she was looking for a job in the city for 4 to 5000 per month to support her two daughters and her mother with a little support of kadam in creating an ecosystem in the village itself within 3 years she is earning 15 to 20000 per month today and leads a rural enterprise with 180 more rural women all earning 2 to 7000 per month from their homes krishna day is not just earning well but is also the village pradhan now in dulabari north bengal mohan a school dropout today thinks like an engineer and gives ideas to machine makers for what will increase his uh, productivity in bamboo basketry in his village aror in west bengal he's currently also consulting for a tata reality project in manda in north bengal these empowered women and youth are also basketry makers using natural fibers available locally producing zero carbon footprint products kadam has a 60 day skilling module um, for entire communities who become stakeholders in the business which is created collectively taking ownership of growth of not just self this transformation also entails behind the scenes 3 years hand holding um swot analysis raw material uh, mapping a skill assessment to identifying and executing green technology for processing the raw material with support from um, collaborators like iit and others iit kharagpur market research is done and market needs are identified uh, these are married with the skills available after upskilling so that all skills get work collectively now in the picture roti box is one such example uh, which is an example where in sustainable income in nirupama's cluster is attained through this one product and the right kind of collaborations with national and international b2b and b2c markets apart from this process of hand holding for 3 years kadam has been able to take this craft tech opportunity of livelihood directly to the rural homes where 85% of impacted people are these rural women From 2006 to 2020, we have impacted 6,470 across four states of India and created 12 successful rural enterprises whose incomes grew from 50% to 195% even during COVID because of the robust backend um, supply chain system that was set up in trainings. Our partners in this journey have been HCL Foundation, 
who taught us to create the source code for trainings. We learned tangible return mapping from HDFC Bank. Um, government bodies like uh, JNK government, Odisha, West Bengal, helped us to solve raw material farming issues. And with World Bank, we've learned how collaborations work best at macro level to solve micro issues on ground. Our pledge is to make 1,000 rural enterprises using local green materials in the next four years uh, in two states of India. This will cost four crores with green technology and trainings taking up 50% of the total cost. We need your help here. To kickstart our pledge, our ask from this pitch grant is creating an e-learning tool for eco-friendly dyeing of natural fibers and processing of raw materials for better shelf life. Especially now during the pandemic, this video tool will help us reach out to many, many, many more artisans in the rural areas and other NGOs as well, besides mentioned in our project. Let us together weave a dream where richness of rural lives is unleashed. Every pair of hands has work. Technology supports humans and environment. And every mind is creatively building Bharat. Jai Hind. Thanks, Payal. The way you have created the craft tech transformation model is so wonderful. The next NGO we have is called Karigar. Karigar Clinic. Their mission is to develop entrepreneurs among Karigar communities to create sustainable livelihood and to strengthen the Karigar's social and economic status. They want to empower them to make villages a better place to work, earn and live. To share his passion and his story with us, let's listen to the founder of Karigar Clinic, Dr. Nilesh Priyadarshi. अरेगर क्लिनिक की तरफ से आप सभी को मेरा नमस्कार हम लोग एक अनोखा क्लिनिक चलाते हैं जहां पर हम कारीगर का बिजनेस सेहत ठीक करते हैं और उनको एंटरप्रेन्योर्स बनाते हैं आज मैं आपसे एक सवाल पूछना चाहता हूं आप सब लोग ने रितु कुमार का नाम सुना ही होगा पर क्या ये सुंदर वॉल हैंगिंग बनाने वाले कारीगर के बारे में आपको पता है भारत में ऐसे दो मिलियन आर्टिसन है इसमें से अस्सी परसेंट किसी न किसी एनजीओ और बड़ी ब्रांड्स के साथ काम करते हैं बहुत दुख के साथ कहना पड़ता है कि उसमें से 70 परसेंट आर्टिसन का मंथली इनकम 5000 से कम है और उनको किसी भी तरह का आइडेंटिटी भी नहीं मिलता एक कारीगर के लिए अच्छा इनकम और पहचान दोनों मायना रखता है भारत में 600 बिलियन डॉलर का हैंडीक्राफ्ट का मार्केट है पर एक कारीगर की जिंदगी में बहुत बड़ा बदलाव नहीं आया है इसलिए 30 परसेंट आर्टिसन ने अपना काम करना छोड़ दिया है और हर मिनट में 30 लोग गांव छोड़कर शहरों में माइग्रेट कर रहे हैं और अर्बनाइजेशन के क्या दुष्प्रभाव होते हैं वो हम सब लोगों ने अच्छे से देखे हैं गांव टूटते जा रहे हैं और शहर कॉन्क्रीट के जंगल बनते जा रहे हैं इसका एकमात्र सोल्यूशन हमें लग रहा है कि कारीगर को बिजनेस करना सिखाया जाए और लोकल एंटरप्रेन्योर बनाया जाए पर जिस कारीगर की हम बात करते हैं उनके पास शिक्षा रिसोर्सेस बिजनेस स्किल मैनेजमेंट स्किल का अभाव है तो वो चाह कर भी अपना छोटा बिजनेस शुरू नहीं कर पा रहे हैं और इसलिए हमने कारीगर क्लिनिक स्टार्ट किया है इसको चलाने वाले हम दो डॉक्टर्स हैं पिछले 20 से अधिक सालों से हमने भारत प्रदेश के अलग अलग गांवों में कारीगरों के साथ काम किया है कारीगर के प्रॉब्लम को बहुत अच्छे से समझा है और इसके सोल्यूशन के रूप में हमने कारीगर क्लिनिक स्टार्ट किया है और ये हमारी जर्नी के दौरान हमारी मुलाकात पाबी बेन रबारी से हुई ये गुजरात के नोमेडिक रबारी कम्युनिटी के आर्टिसन हैं उनको अपना छोटा सा बिजनेस शुरू करना था बट कैसे शुरू करें उसके बारे में कोई जानकारी नहीं थी वो कारीगर क्लिनिक के साथ जुड़ी हमने उनके नाम से पाबी बेन डॉट कॉम ब्रांड बनाया और उनको सिखाया कि अपने गाँव से बिजनेस कैसे करना है और डिजाइन इंटरवेंशन करके 
उनका एक बैग जो आज पाबी बैग के नाम से पूरी दुनिया में मशहूर हुआ है हॉलीवुड और बॉलीवुड का स्टाइल स्टेटमेंट बन गया है आज ये बैग हम और हमारे कारीगर डॉक्टर्स पाबी बैंक से और कारीगर का बिजनेस हेल्थ चेकअप करते हैं उनको बिजनेस कैसे शुरू करना है कैसे स्केल अप करना है कैसे चलाना है वो सिखाते हैं हम डिजाइन इंटरवेंशन करके उनके प्रोडक्ट को और भी अच्छा मार्केटेबल कैसे बनाना है वो सिखाते हैं उनकी स्टोरीज को हम नरेट करते हैं और फंड जुटाते हैं और उनकी स्टोरी को कहानी को ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोगों तक हम पहुंचाते हैं कारीगर की दुकान का प्लेटफॉर्म हम कारीगर को सीधा मार्केट के साथ जोड़ते हैं ये जीरो परसेंट कमीशन पर चलने वाला भारत का पहला मार्केट प्लेस है लोकल गिफ्ट बॉक्स जैसे इनिशिएटिव से हम कारीगर के लिए डोमेस्टिक मार्केट स्ट्रेंदन करते हैं कोविड के समय में जब सारे कारीगर के बिजनेस बंद हो गए थे तो हमने पचास लाख से ऊपर का बिजनेस कारीगरों के लिए जनरेट किया था तो हमारे ये सब प्रयासों से आज पाबी बैंक एक सक्सेसफुल एंटरप्रेन्योर बन गई है महज पंद्रह सौ रुपया कमाने वाली पाबी बहन आज चालीस लाख का टर्नओवर कर रही है उनको ग्लोबल रिकॉग्निशन मिला है और बहुत सारी महिलाओं के लिए वो रोल मॉडल बन गई है पाबी बहन के अलावा हमने और भी आर्टिसन बिजनेसेस डेवलप किए हैं जैसे कि राजीव बहन एक वीडो महिला जिसको कोई सपोर्ट नहीं था वो कारीगर क्लिनिक के साथ जुड़ी और आज वो अपने गाँव में 25 और विधवा महिलाओं को लाइवलीहुड देती है मेंटली चैलेंज महिलाओं को लाइवलीहुड देती है और अपना इनकम 20 गुना ज्यादा बढ़ा पाई है जब्बार भाई जिन्होंने अपना ट्रेडिशनल काम छोड़ दिया था और एक टाइल्स फैक्ट्री में काम कर रहे थे उनको हम उनके काम में वापस लाए और जब्बार भाई कारीगर क्लिनिक के साथ जुड़ने के बाद आज एक करोड़ का बिजनेस कर रहे हैं और एक आर्टिसन को लाइवलीहुड देते हैं जोत्ना बैन जो रोजगार के सिलसिले में शहर में माइग्रेट कर गई थी कैलकुलेटर और बुक्स बेच रही थी उनको हम समझा के अपने 400 साल पुराने क्राफ्ट में वापस लाए हैं और आज जोत्ना बेन तीस गुना ज्यादा इनकम कमा रही है और हमें खुशी हो रही है कि हमारे ये सब प्रयासों से आज रिवर्स माइग्रेशन हो रहा है न सिर्फ फाइनेंस बट कारीगर को जो आइडेंटिटी वैल्यू रिकोगशन चाहिए उनको डिग्निटी चाहिए वो हम उनको दे रहे हैं और अभी तक हमने एक हजार से ज्यादा कारीगर को अपने ट्रेडिशनल हैंडीक्राफ्ट में वापस लाए हैं और पांच हजार आर्टिसन को हमने डायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली इंपैक्ट किया है क्या होगा अगर भारत के हर गांव में पाबी बहन और राजीव बहन होगी तो मुझे लग रहा है कि भारत जैसे देश में हमें बिलियन डॉलर वाली कंपनी नहीं पर वन मिलियन आर्टिसन एंटरप्रेन्योर्स की जरूरत है जो लोकल इकोनॉमी को मजबूत करे और महात्मा गांधी जी के सिद्धांतों पर ग्रामीण रूरल बिजनेस मॉडल तैयार करें, फेस टू फेस मार्केट कल्चर तैयार करें और इंटर डिपेंडेंट कम्युनिटीज बनाए कारीगर क्लिनिक का विजन भी है कि आने वाले समय में भारत में पाबी बहन जैसे एक हजार ग्रामीण एंटरप्रेन्योर तैयार करना चाहते हैं और एक लाख फैमिली के लाइवलीहुड क्रिएट करना चाहते हैं और आपके सहयोग से हमारा ये विजन परिपूर्ण हो सकता है हमें आने वाले समय में दस कारीगर एंटरप्रेन्योर्स तैयार करने हैं एक कारीगर को बिजनेस डेवलप करने के लिए दस लाख रुपए की जरूरत है साथ ही में हमें कारीगर डॉक्टर्स की हमारी टीम को और बढ़ाना है और आपके नेटवर्क कनेक्शन का भी हमें जरूरत है तो आइए हम सब मिलके भारत की कला कारीगरी को आगे बढ़ाएं और ग्रामीण भारत में और भी पाबी बहन जबार भाई जैसे आर्टिसन डेवलप करें धन्यवाद डॉक्टर नीलेष लव द नेम देट यू हैव कारीगर क्लिनिक and love the vision that you have that our country needs 1 million artisan entrepreneurs all the best for the journey our next ngo is i shaksham whose mission is to build community education leaders to enrich the educational experiences of underserved children so that they become well educated skilled and self reliant to tell us more about their work plans let's listen to their program manager divya sharma Hi everyone 
I am Divya from iSaksham. iSaksham means I am capable. And we believe that we cannot build a Saksham society when so many of our young women are highly vulnerable. And this problem is more acute in backward states like Bihar. For example, Alka, a very pride-driven girl whom we met for the first time in 2019. Alka comes from one of the extremism affected Munge district of Bihar. And she, like several other young women of her community, had very high chances of dropping out of higher education, being forced to early marriage, or experience domestic violence at some point in her life. And lack of right role models in her community and very limited social networks would mean that Alka would continue to live a life of unacknowledged identity and unrealized potential. This is the situation of nearly 10 million young women like Alka in Bihar whose potential to contribute towards the socio-economic growth of their community remains untapped. Now, let's just see who is Alka today. Today, Alka is a very proud daughter with a very strong identity. She's not yet married and pursuing her graduation. She's a role model to children whom she helped build foundational literacy. She inspired 10 peer girls in her community to pursue their graduation and negotiate with their families for their dreams. She stopped early child marriages, and influence parents to participate in the learning journey of children. So what led to this transformation in Alka? Well, she received 100 weekly coaching sessions and reported an increase in confidence in two years. Parallelly, she was placed in an under-resourced government school to teach children for 10 hours per week using modern day activity based approaches. And 40% of her students who could not read anything in 2019 could form simple Hindi words in 2021. And this happened despite COVID challenges. She also held various parental engagement activities and organized various learning fairs to enhance parents' participation towards the learning of children, which resulted into a 25% increase in the attendance of children at schools. This is what we do. We run a two-year fellowship program to build local young women like Alka as community edu leaders. And our core differentiator lies in three integrated leadership tracks that these women grow in. One is the personal leadership where they gain self-confidence and efficacy through regular coaching and mentoring and emerge as inspirational role models. Second is the education leadership where they bridge gaps in the distressed local school system and teach children and emerge as education champions. And third is the community leadership where they build ties in the community to enhance communities' ownership towards education and emerge as active citizens. We have so far built a cadre of 200 edu leaders starting with just 15 in 2017. These edu leaders are working in four extremism affected districts of Bihar, uh, providing quality education to 7,500 children in 100 schools and influencing 5,000 parents. And just look at the ripples these women have created in their communities. They're able to take independent decisions about their lives. They're becoming political representatives and they're able to go out from the village to study. Over the past few years, we have received significant recognition by reputed agencies. Our founders, co-founders have started this journey as Prime Minister's Rural Development Fellows in Bihar. They have been together for the past 10 years with regular backing by our mentors and donors. Our mission is to build a network of 10,000 edu leaders by 2030, impacting more than half a million people. Our focus till 2025 is the regions of Southern Bihar. And after that, we want to scale the model to across Bihar and nationwide with the focus on districts with poor HDI. Our scale pathways include leveraging the power of our alumni, community leaders in residence, and a franchisee model for replication enabled by IT driven systems and field building. It takes 1,50,000 per annum to build an edu leader with a per beneficiary cost of 3,000. And our funding gap for 2022-23 is 4 CR to build 300 edu leaders. Hence, it would be great to have your support in terms of program grants, catalytic grants, and reference to like mentors who can guide and inspire our edu leaders to build a Saksham society. And at the end, Alka has something to say to all of us. उम्मीद है आप सभी को मेरी कहानी अच्छी लगी होगी क्योंकि मैं हमेशा से एक ऐसी बेटी बनना चाहती हूं जो कि पढ़ाएगी भी और बच्चाएगी भी चलिए हम सब मिलकर एक ऐसे समाज का निर्माण करते हैं जहां हर घर में मेरी तरह एक अलका हो थैंक्स वी विश हर घर में एक अलका हो थैंक यू वेरी मच दिव्या अलकस 
story and transformation is stunning and the place where you are working this work is so required we wish you all the best in the endeavors that you have the next ngo for today evening is dbm india their mission is to contribute significantly towards reducing poverty by increasing access to education by increasing the availability of employment and other income opportunities dbm india serves all people regardless of religion caste race ethnicity or gender to share dbm india story with us let's welcome their director of programs farheen peshimam Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Farin. I represent DBM India. DBM India works on enabling livelihoods to eradicate hunger because we believe if you give a man a fish you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish you feed him for a lifetime. A country can grow only if its people are growing. But unfortunately a large section of our population lacks even one square meal sharing some real time facts 7000 of our people 7000 people die in india every day 38% children are born stunted 21% are below poverty line and the slum population has doubled in the last two decades let us meet divya a beneficiary of dbm india who lives in the m bot slums divya is a class 10 dropout a migrant from bihar she was married at the early age of 16 by the age of 20 divya was a mother of 3 her husband was a daily wager and earned rupees 200 a day the low income could not provide her family proper food and most of the time they would sleep hungry her life changed when she enrolled for skill training as an ecce teacher at the dbm center post completion DBM assisted her with placement. Today, Divya is a teacher. She proudly says, "I can now support my family and educate my children." Divya is a role model to many women in her community. Like Divya, Arnab, Reshma, Pooja, Ekta, and many more Divyas face similar issues of rural to urban migration, lack of opportunity, low financial support. poor quality education and little or no skill training dbm india works in the m ward of mumbai which has a population as big as sweden 256 slums and the lowest human development index dbm india is a humanitarian organization working in the slums of m ward since 2008 to help individuals like divya become empowered and employable The DBM model is job focused and we work on the two verticals of education and skill training. In our education interventions we work on scholarships and provide them from school level to post graduate level level. The Uran Interactive Center is at Deonar and this focuses on quality and interactive education. The Empower Library and Study Center is made to help first generation learners become achievers in professional careers. Our skill training interventions are in five skill sets. All our training programs are certified and most of them have NIIT, MSCIT and NSDC certification. We are happy to share that out of 70% who are earning a livelihood, 30% are entrepreneurs. In our journey of 13 years, we have consolidated our model and have impacted and empowered 17,000 plus beneficiaries in the skill training vertical. and 20000 plus students in the education vertical again i would like to emphasize that 80% of our beneficiaries are women but there is no stopping here our goal till 2025 is to educate 
3,000 more students, to skill, ta skill train 6,000 more beneficiaries, and to open five more new centers in socially disadvantaged areas. To empower more Divyas, we need your support. You are the ones who can make this possible. The cost of educating one student per year is rupees 36,000, and the cost of skill training one beneficiary is rupees 24,000. At a cost of rupees 20 lakhs, we can set up a center in any slum of Mumbai. Let us hear Divya. Hi, my name is Divya. My dream was to be a teacher. But when I was born, I was born. 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 Your donations can help create everlasting change. Thank you, SVP, for giving us this wonderful opportunity. And thank you, lovely audience, for hearing us out. God bless. Thank you, Farid. It was so cute to hear Divya say, Mere Mr. and then speak in English. And a transformation into being a teacher and the pride is so visible. 30% plus people, beneficiaries are entrepreneurs. Amazing. And wish you all the best for all your work. The last NGO for today evening is Dakshas Foundation. Dakshas helps marginalized patients get non-emergency medical treatment by tapping into its network of healthcare providers for secondary and tertiary healthcare. They strive to ensure that no patient suffers constraints in healthcare. To fulfill his dream of universal healthcare and why he decided to start Dakshas, let's hear from Dr. Bharat Sharma. Good evening, I am Bharat Sharma from Dakshas, presenting Sthira for a fall-free elderly independent life. India is a young country and elderly programs are not mainstream. But any orthopedician will tell you that 50% of the surgeries they do on elderly are not necessary because those falls and injuries should have never happened. India is home to 20% of the world's elderly population. One in four of these elderly will fall this year and one in four of those falls will result in injuries. We all remember a time when our parents taught us driving and we see learners drive on the roads every day. When you leave home, you hear a voice, go safely. But do you know that our elderly face four times the risk of fall related injuries in our homes than the risk of accidents we face on the roads? Now, we all know these vital signs of blood pressure and blood sugar, especially COVID has taught us this. We have instruments at home to measure this. But how many of us are aware of the fall risk of our own elderly? Dakshas, through its Thira program, hopes to convert elderly fall risk into a new vital sign to be measured, tracked and mitigated, just as we track and mitigate blood pressures and blood sugars. Once the fall risk is known, general practitioners can help proactively follow up high risk individuals. Specialists can identify special risk factors through diagnostic tests. Home environments can be sanitized for fall hazards and elderly mobility can be maximized with physiotherapy and occupational therapy. So why is this not part of everyday elderly care? Because of lack of awareness and because we don't have an instrument to measure fall risk. That's where Stira comes in. Based on CDC Atlanta's study program, Stira ensures that every elderly's fall risk can be measured and mitigated instantly. Let me share the story of how Stira came about. Through our pilot project at Tata Trust, where we provided orthopedic care to around 43,000 patients, we happened to visit a lot 
part of old age homes. And surprisingly, we found that these elderly did not have cardiac or respiratory problems. They faced immense physical disability and fall risk because of the neurological, orthopedic or lifestyle diseases they had. I remember this one elderly who had fallen eight months back, had broken both her hips and had not yet met a doctor. No health system can cater to all the elderly that fall. But any community can ensure that no elderly falls. And that is how Stira was born. Stira is a web app. It guides the user through 10 simple yes or no questions. A second panel takes you through three simple tests to find out the walking, strength, and balance problems of an elderly. It gives you an instant fall risk assessment. Other panels help you screen for fall hazards at home and for risk of cataract. We hope to introduce Thera into clinical environments so that whenever an elderly visits a clinic or gets admitted into a hospital, their fall risk is also measured just as their blood pressures and blood sugars are measured. We hope to conduct pro bono fall risk assessment programs in old age homes so that high risk individuals can be identified and their risk mitigated. We hope to inspire grandchildren in schools so that they can go home and find out the fall risk of their grandparents. Through this platform and your support, we hope to convert Stira into a world class elderly fall prevention program with a short term goal to prevent 8 million fall related injuries we may face every year. If we do this alone at Dakshas, a single unit of Stira may cost 32.5 lakhs in the urban setting. It may provide direct benefit to 24,000 elderly and also promote Stira in clinical environments. But our real ask today is that this weekend, take some time out to find the fall risk of your elderly. And next week, talk about elderly fall prevention among your networks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bharat, for your sharing. You and your organization are doing such important work.